We need the leader to provide direction, hope, guidance, the way forward. That same leader needs to be able to communicate the vision for the team and to build the people power under their accountability. What do we get though? Leaders who can't lead and can only manage the processes. We get poor commitment from the team because they don't know the why of what they are being asked to do. It doesn't have to be like that. Welcome back to this weekly edition of Every Tuesday's The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Carnegie Training Japan. And we are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minato-ku, the business center of Tokyo. Well, where is this cutting edge? For all of us, the quality of our people is the cutting edge for success in Japan. In this show, I will stimulate your thinking about ramping up your business, bring you insights from the best training organization on the planet, provide you with the highest quality Japan information, motivate you to motivate yourself and motivate those around you. Help you to shoot the lights out at results time. I don't want to just help you to succeed in your business. I want you to dominate. Before we get into this week's topic, here is what caught my attention lately. Japanese people are very reluctant to take their paid holidays. In fact, they rank lowest in the world and feel the most guilty about it. They're only taking about 50% of their annual leave and 63% feel guilty when they do take it. The reasons cited for not taking leave are lack of staff and colleagues not taking days off. Interestingly, 33% said they did not know whether their bosses were supportive of them taking paid vacations. I notice that in my own office, I am constantly pushing my team to take holidays, but they're always having large amounts of unpaid leave accrued to them. The crazy thing is they can only accrue it for two years and then they lose it. Nevertheless, they keep accruing and losing year after year after year. I even brought in separately five days just for sick leave to try and get them to use more of their holiday leave. But it hasn't worked much so far. Let's see if they change their thinking about taking annual leave. This is episode number 17, and we are talking about develop your superpower as a leader. Sore dewa ikimashou. Let's get going. Job descriptions, performance reviews, incentive schemes, recognition programs are often box ticking activities in organizations, which often lead nowhere. Overviewing these various systems and their execution may make the managers feel like they are earning their keep, but they are really, are they really contributing all that much to the required outcomes? Counting what the heads do, getting those heads to think and to think together are different challenges and the latter necessitates cultivating people. Cultivating people is the new black for managers as they must move up and into real leadership. So what is the difference between being a manager and a leader? There are many definitions, but it doesn't have to be complex. Leadership is all about creating environments that influence others to achieve the group goals. Because 
people will willingly support a world they create. Management is the creation, implementation and monitoring of processes. People will willingly comply with a process that helps them succeed. Moving forward means designating the next level of achievement. In a busy life, with a deluge of emails every day, spiced up with endless, meaningless meetings, we can sometimes forget what is the point of all this as we are totally consumed with activity. We need to set the vision for the team of where we want to be and what is the next level for us. It must be concrete, clear and well communicated. I ran across one the other day, <clears throat> delivering extraordinary customer experiences. Rather ambiguous. You could be delivering extraordinarily bad experiences to your customers. A bit more clarity needed back at HQ by the look of that one. It raises the point though that clarity in the communication is the key. If you want to get people behind your direction, don't kid yourself. Semantics matter. So, where possible, get buy-in to the vision such that it is a shared process. This may be difficult when the vision is lofting down from on high, but there are always sub-visions for the work group that can take it to a further concrete stage or which further clarify the main message for the reality facing that team. With a successfully shared vision, the troops cease seeing their role as a robotic task completion and switch to results completion. How about down at your shop is there a shared vision or shared sub-vision? Are the team focused on painting by numbers or on producing a group triumph? Do they know what the designation is for the next level? We ask people to step up, but <clears throat> that also asks them to take on risks of the new or the different. The outcomes must be totally defined and clear and the team must buy into achieving them in order to step out of their current mode and take on the risks of the unknown. There Be Dragons is a strong gravitational pull away from innovation or anything shiny and new. It must be counted by you, the leader. Leadership begins to include self-leadership when we buy in and get clarity because it allows the team to be more self-directed, handling their available resources without the need for micromanagement by the boss. Ah, we can all quote the buzzwords such as empowerment and empowered behavior, etc. But actually, realizing that desired state is another matter. The poor communication skills of those in charge are often the breakdown point. The vision statement penned by the CEO goes up on the wall in a nice frame on expensive paper, safely protected behind glass and there for all to completely ignore from now on. No, no, no. It has to live. Find out about how to do that when we come back from the break. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the Leadership Training for Managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Welcome back. If your people can't quote the company, division or section vision on demand from memory, you aren't even on the first rung to having a real vision. 
If you can't remember it, you can't live it. It is not a one-shot, all-dancing, all-singing pronouncement and move-on affair. It always amazes me how often you have to keep telling the team the same thing for it to really permeate. The leader will certainly get tired of saying it all the time, but has to keep going because the listeners always take much longer than expected to absorb the content. It just points up the fact we are competing with a lot of noise, a lot of other stuff for the real estate of cluttered minds. When you ask senior executives to identify the most significant personal characteristic needed by management, they will dutifully trot out the ability to work with people. Take a look at the expense line in your P&L. People are a huge component. Yet, so many leaders are woeful communicators. They are often promoted into positions of accountability on the basis that they can count. They are insular, brainy, technical experts. They are CFOs who can't grow the business but can watch the bottom line like a legend. They are the idiosyncratic salesperson who does it my way but can't teach it to anyone else. We need to teach these smart people how to be people smart. It is a different attitude and skill set. The executive decisions get carried out by people, but how much time does your leadership team spend building your people as opposed to issuing directives, giving orders, providing technical guidance, etc.? These activities are all about the how and zero on the why. Time to start work on some personal leadership, strongly communicating the why and getting the team to create a shared vision of your organization's better and brighter future. Keep pushing hard with us here at the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Subscribe on YouTube, share it with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, japan.dalecarnegie.com. It is awesome value, so check it out. In episode 18, we are talking about storytelling is a winner. Find out how we do that next week. So, yoroshiku, onegai itashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Until then, create seriously massive levels of success. We are here to help you do that. Dale Carnegie Training Japan has only one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.